When you create a circuit, the intent is almost always to synthesize it. There is really no reason not to create a circuit that you don't want to build, right? However, VHDL, the reason that we use hardware description languages is because before you build that circuit, you can verify that it actually is correct. That's very important because when we build a VHDL model, it's great because we live in a tool, we live in the CAD tool, we verify that our VHDL is correct, then we actually take a leap of faith that the synthesizer will interpret it correctly. Okay? So we want to make sure that what we give that synthesizer is absolutely perfect and logically correct before it goes through and creates all the gates for us that are downloaded to the, to the chip. Okay? So if you think about it, we need a way to exercise our design. Now, we typically call a design within a test bench the design under test. That's what the DUT is. Okay? So we call the nickname of whatever you're testing is DUT. If you think about it, your circuit is not going to have things in it that generate like input stimulus. Okay? It is going to react to inputs and create an output. That means if you want to make sure that this thing works, what you have to do is you have to have some mechanism to drive in inputs. And you have to have some mechanism to observe the outputs. Okay? So what we do is we create another VHDL file which is called a test bench. And in that test bench, what we do is we instantiate our system we're testing, our DUT, and we do that as a component. Okay? So we're just going to call this thing. It's assuming you've already done it, obviously. And you call that thing, and when you call it, you need to connect up the inputs and the outputs. Remember, this is now a new VHDL file, this test bench. And so you need to actually create internal signals to connect to the inputs and the outputs. The convention that we use in this class is we use the same name. So for example, the DUT has the input ports of A, B, and C, and F. We put an underscore TB for test bench as the internal signals within the test bench so we can easily differentiate when we look at the simulation. Okay? Now, we create those signals. We need a way to generate what we call input stimulus input vectors, input patterns. And what we do is we use all of these constructs that we've learned in VHDL in order to generate those. So we can do it with a process. We can do it with weight statements. We can do it with signal assignments. Notice that a test bench never gets synthesized. That means you can use all of the capability within VHDL to generate stimulus and check the outputs, and you don't have to worry about whether it's synthesizable. That is the key reason that VHDL allows you to have both synthesizable and unsynthesizable capability. Sound good? OK, so what we will do is we will generate that. How do you observe the output? You have two ways of observing the output. Number one, we are going to use a CAD tool to simulate this. You, almost all, well, all CAD tools, a, allow you to view the output as a waveform. So if you don't do anything but just let this signal dangle, that's perfectly acceptable because the waveform viewer will allow you to look at it. So we can graphically see if it was correct. You can also do cool things like dump this to the transcript window, or you can take this and write it to a file, and you can check it kind of manually. So when you look at just the ones and the zeros printed in a, in a file, that's called a uh, listing view. For what we do is we always use the waveform viewer. Okay? All right. So that is what we are going to do. So why don't we, probably the best way to learn it is to just do one. Okay? All right. So I walk up to you and I say, I need to create a test bench. So I'm going to go into my project folder and I'm going to do a new folder. And we'll call this puppy test bench. Okay. We are creating the test bench. Let's go grab our system X from the last example. It's already done. We don't want to create a new DUT. Let's just go grab it. So I'm going to grab system X, and I'm going to come over to here, and I'm going to add it. Now, the assumption is that this worked, <clears throat> so we'll check it out and make sure it works. So now I have my DUT, and I'm going to start model sim, and I am now going to create the test bench. OK, so I fire this puppy up. 
Model Sim. There it is. All right, as always, I'm going to start up and I'm going to say File, New, Project. I need to browse to my little folder where I keep everything, which is right here, obviously. And I say, OK. I'm going to name it. I always name it Project, just so I can easily find that file. I say, OK. Now, this thing's going to ask me, do you want to add an existing file? Absolutely. Except this time, we're adding our system X, our DUT, what we're testing. I browse system X. Thank you for adding that. Now, I'm going to create a new file. The naming convention for test benches that we use in this class is the name that we're testing, underscore TB. So that that is obvious what we're doing. So we're going to call this system underscore TB. We say OK. Close it. Life is good. Now let's take a look at what we got. Let's take a look at this. I'm going to look at system X and make sure that it looks OK. I look at it. It's system X. It's got ABC as the ports. The output is F. It's using type bit, which is fine. I just need to know what it, it uses. And it's, it looks like some sort of combination of logic circuit where it asserts for row 1, 2, and 3. OK, fine with me. Let's now create something to drive stimulus into this guy. All right, so I come over to here, system X test bench. The thing is blank, as suspected. So now, I'm going to start this guy up. Let me ask you a question. What are the ports for system X? If you look at this picture, the ports for system X were A, B, C, and F. What are the ports for system X test bench? If you really think about it, it doesn't have any ports, right? There's nothing outside of this. All it's doing is generating internal signals and then assigning them values and then looking at an internal signal. So the, uh, the, the key of a test bench, it doesn't have any ports. And that's perfectly acceptable, OK? So I come back over, and I say, let's do our port definition. So I go back to model sim, and I am going to do the following. Entity, I call it the same as my file name, is, this is where I would put the ports. Yes? OK, that's a bummer. It'll still work. Okay, but I should, yes, you are absolutely correct. I should have done that. Now, if you did this, what would you do? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to back out of here just to show you how you do it. I'm going to say, no, I don't want to change that. I'm going to click on this puppy. I'm going to say, remove from project. Delete it as well. Now, I'm going to come back here, right click, add to project, new file. And let's call it system X underscore TB. Bada bing. We're back. So that's how you would do it if, if you did exactly what I did. Now, that's a nice catch. Entity. I mean, that was a long time ago I typed that in, though. OK. Let's <laughs> tighten up that loop, huh? That feedback loop. OK, so entity system X underscore TP is, now here, here's my ports, and entity. That's all you do. OK, we're done. Architecture. Architecture system X underscore TB underscore arc of tie it to system X underscore arc is not even close system X good lord in the morning here we go let's think about this the name of this is system X TB the architecture name is system X TB arc and I need to tie it to system X TB okay there we go now I'm gonna come down here I'm gonna go begin and I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to warm up the compiler. Okay, So I need to do end architecture. At that moment, that's the bare, bare bones needed to simulate, or, to, or excuse me, to compile. So compile selected. Oh. Let's compile this one and see if it worked from our last time. Oh. All right. Now we are ready. The first step is we're going to instantiate the DUT. So we call it as a component. When you do that, you actually need to think about creating your internal signals in order to wire it up. 
So you come up here before the begin statement. This is where we do what we call declarations. And this is where you would do a signal declaration and also a component declaration. So the first thing I'm going to do is create the signals I will connect to this guy. So I'm going to do a signal and I'm going to say A underscore TB, B underscore TB, C underscore TB, and I am going to give this the type bit. This is creating a wire inside of your test bench. A wire has no direction. It's just a wire. Okay? That's why you have a type but no mode or what we call it. Okay, I could have put this F underscore signal or F underscore TB on the same line, but I just did it like this, so it's just a little more obvious that those are the inputs, this is the output, okay? I have now created, declared four signals. Now I need to declare any components that I may instantiate after the begin statement. So I declare the component. Here's how you declare the component. You type component. That's the keyword. Then you give it component. Okay. Turns red when you spell it right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it the name of what I am calling. Here's what you got to do though. I'm not going to guess. Okay. I'm like, I, can't, I remember it had some ports in there. Let's just go copy it. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to grab this right here and I'm going to copy this so that I don't screw anything up. So I copy that, come back to system and I'm going to do this. Component system X, you actually don't need the is there, even though I believe it still will work with it, but you don't need it. So I say component system X, you list out exactly what the port definitions are. If they don't match, it won't be able to find it and it'll say error design not bound. Okay? And I'll show you where that will say that. Okay, so I come over to here and I'm gonna end component, and that's it. I have now declared a couple signals, like four of them, and then I declared a component, and now I come down here and I am ready to model some functionality. First off, let us instantiate the dot. So now I'm going to call it. I told it that this is what the dot is, now I'm going to drop it down into my design. That's called instantiating. I give it a name. I give it a descriptive name so that I can tell it apart. I'm just going to call it dot. Okay? Dot one. Okay, I could have a bunch of duts, but let's do dut one. Okay, I'm gonna say name of the dut, which is system X. Again, it has to match what you declared. And now I'm ready to do, if you may recall this, the port map. Port map is how you wire your signals within this architecture, these guys up here, to the ports of the dut you are calling, or the component you're calling. So this is the wiring part. I'm gonna do this with explicit port mapping. I am going to list out the name of the port underneath me and I'm going to name the wire and I'm going to connect them so that there's no ambiguity. So the way that you do that is after port map, you do open parentheses, you list the port name below and you use that little connection operator. Okay? It's a flippy of the assignment operator. This is a connection operator. So I do that and I say, you know what I'd like to connect to A? Let's connect A to B. Come on. Then, you know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to connect to B, the port below. I'm going to connect B, DB, comma. And then, you're probably saying, why don't you copy and paste? And I said, don't worry about it. I'm going to go C, CTB, and then finally, you know what I'm going to connect to F? You guessed it. FTB. F underscore TB. Now, I close up my parentheses, I semicolon it, and I'm feeling so good. At this moment in time, I am done with my component instantiation. This should compile, honestly. Let's go ahead and see if it does compile. Because we haven't done anything. It was successful. All right, so we got it all right. We have now wired it, and now we got to what? We got to create the input stimulus. Now, if you were a test bench, and you're trying to make sure that your system works, what would you do? You have inputs and it's supposed to have a certain output. What's your strategy to make sure this thing works? Wah, voila! <laughs> we're going we're to put in an input and then we're going to look at the output. Okay? How many possible inputs would this circuit have? It's got three input bits. 
How many unique input codes does that represent? Two to the n. So we could, we could put, we have eight unique codes. Should we just do one code? Call it good? That's more than 10% verified, right? Well, how about we put all of them in? And then why don't we just do it over and over and over? Okay, good idea. So let us begin. You know what I'm going to do this? I not only need to put them in, I need to put them in and then wait for a second. Okay? Because if you did all these assignments, it's like they would all take place at the same time if they were concurrent signal assignments. If you put them as sequential signal assignments, they would just all be queued up and then made and it, nothing would ever change. So we actually need to use wait statements to put in the input and then wait for a certain amount of time and then look at the output. Agree? So if we want to wait, we have to use a process. So I'm going to call my process stim and I'm going to say pro keyword process. You may say to yourself, hey, you didn't put a sensitivity list there. Didn't you say that if you don't put a sensitivity list, you are modeling unsynthesizable logic? And I say, correct. This is a test bench. This is not going to synthesize. That's why we're able to do this so that when this process, when you run the simulation, this will immediately trigger and it will immediately come inside and start doing these things. So here's where we start. Begin. And I'm going to start by inputting the first code, which is 000. So I'm going to do A underscore what? Who am I assigning to? A underscore TB. You can only assign to your internal signals. You can't assign to that port. You got to assign to your internal signals that you had wired to that guy. So I say A underscore TB is equal to a zero. And then I do semicolon. Now what I can do is I can go copy and change this to B. And then I come over here and I go boom, paste, and I go C. I have just now assigned 000 to ABC underscore TB. And now what I want to do is wait for how long do you want to wait? 50 nanoseconds? That sounds good to me. 50 nanoseconds. Bam. Now, at this point, this also should compile. So before I start copying and pasting, let me compile this puppy. Oh, now it's time to copy and paste. You probably didn't see that green come up, so watch what I do. I clear the transcript window. I come up, compile, select it. No. Now I come back and I go boom. I'm going to now change, after 50 nanoseconds, I'm going to put in 001. Then I'm going to do another four, and this time I'll put in 010 and 011. And then finally, let's go ahead and do another four. And there they are. So I got boom, boom, and boom. So make that a one, make that a one, make that a one, make that a one. OK, at this moment in time, we are feeling pretty good. We've gone through all the possible input codes, compile, selected. Oh. Now, <laughs> let's run it. Let me ask you a question. I like the fact that we use 50 nanoseconds because it's a different time. How long do we need to run our simulation for? At a minimum. 8 times 50 nanoseconds, AKA 400 nanoseconds. That's different from what our prior example. So this is cool. So this is different from what we've done. It'll show that it's actually working. OK, so how do I do it? I go into library. I pop open work. I load SystemX test bench. Notice down here, see all this blue stuff right there? It's telling me what's going on. After we make sure this works, let me show you what happens if it gets screwed up. OK, I come into objects. I go add to, wave, signals in region. There they are. Now I come up to here, and I go, at a minimum, run this thing for 400 nanoseconds. I go run. Here they are. I look at the zoom full. It looks like it's working, but you know what I always like to do? I always like to say this. Radix, no, not even close. Combine signals. Let's call it ABC. Let's go ahead and nuke these. And there you go. It is sorted for 001, 010, 011, and all the rest of them were zeros. Is that what we had? Is that what we wanted? Let's go look at our system. The answer is, it is. It's exactly what we expected. Life is good. Now I ask you this question. What if I ran this for longer than 400 nanoseconds? What does it do? You have 400 nanoseconds has gotten you through these eight lines. What happens if you run longer? 
So it comes in here, suspends. That makes the signal assignments. Suspends, 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 suspends. After this one, it ends the process and immediately triggers again forever. Forever means until your simulation is done. That's why if I go into my waveform, I can come in here and I can run this a whole bunch of times. I just hit go, 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 go. I'm hitting it a whole bunch of times. And then if I zoom, it just runs over and over and over. And I can just do this forever. All right. How's that feel? Yes. Now, a very common thing when you have a test pitch is not having it bound correctly. So I want to look at this and show you what happens if I had an error. So let's say that I'm typing my test bench. And let's just say that I accidentally said x, y. I just I misspelled the thing. Okay? And I come along, and let's just see what that error does. So I'm going to go say, I don't even think that error will do anything. Let's, do, let's say we did it up here, x, y. And I'm going to save this. Let's do this like this. So I save this thing, project, and I'm going to compile. Compile, selected. It's got two errors. Oh, let me, let me do it on both so I can actually get it to s compile. OK. Now you're looking at this and you're saying, all right, how do I see if something went wrong? What happens is I'm going to end the simulation by coming over here and say, end simulation. By going simulate, end simulation. OK? This unloads everything. And now I'm going to load up test bench. Now, a whole lot of stuff happened. Did you notice what happened? Let me show you how you can track it. I'm going to end the simulation. I'm going to do that again. If I come down to the test bench, or excuse me, the transcript, and I clear it, now nothing's in this transcript window. So everything that happens on my next task or my next operation will be logged. So I'm going to load this, and I look at it. OK, system TB, start time, standard, blah, blah, warning. Component instant dot one system XY is not bound. That means that it had something in your project that didn't line up. It was looking for a test bench to try to call a dot, but that dot, the component declaration didn't match the component or the entity definition below it. So this is one of the most common things that you're running into. OK, so that is a test bench when you view the output graphically.